Welcome to the Deepak Saini Show. Welcome back to the Deepak Saini Show. I'd like to thank J23 for our intro music. You can find a link to her music in the show description. My guest today is Steve Cody. Steve has accumulated over 30 years of experience in building and selling companies that have employed thousands and generated over $750 million in lifetime sales. Very impressive. Steve, welcome to the Deepak Sandy Show. Thank you very much for having me on. Oh, it's a pleasure. And we've known each other for, for a little while, and I'm so glad to, to uh, have you on the show. Uh, let, Steve, I like to start off by like, let's go back to the beginning. Like, how did you even get into business or what was the first forays that got you into, you know, introductory into business and then we can kind of build from there? Perfect. Yeah, I mean... Started uh, back in high school, so grade 10, uh, very dyslexic. Um, you know, back back then that wasn't dyslexia, wasn't a thing. Um, just pretty much meant you weren't good at school. And uh, my grandfather, he was pretty committed that I would go to university. So he was putting, I think it was $20 a month in the bank for me uh, to save it up for university. And uh by this time, there was like $1,200 in the bank. This is a long time ago. So $1,200 was quite a bit more money. And um, it just by chance, I was out on a weekend, met a guy and kind of said, you know, what do you do? He's like, I'm a window washer. I'm like, what do you mean a window washer? And he explained what he did. And I'm like, people pay to have their windows clean. Like, and he, you know, he told me how busy he was. And so, well, you know, and then I started thinking, well, maybe I could do that. Like, and I asked him, like, what do you need to buy? And so basically, it's pretty simple, right? Like bucket, squeegee, and a ladder. So uh, anyways, I went back, uh, talked to my grandfather, and asked them, you know, if I could take that $1,200 and start a window cleaning company. And uh, we uh, we started Cody Window Cleaning, um, which was probably, if I think back, one of the best lessons I ever had because, of, you know, I, I didn't do any research. So I was quick to find out I was scared of heights. And uh, okay. so, that might be a problem, right? That was definitely definitely a problem. Uh, but what it taught me was, you know, like turning a problem into an opportunity. I think I didn't see it then, but it forced me to hire people because I was too scared to go up in the air. So I had to hire people to do it. So I'm like this young teenager, basically hiring like 30, 40 year old men uh, to work for me. So I'm learning, uh, you know, how to manage people. Um, I'm be basically forced to work on my business instead of working in the business. So I think all of those things helped a lot. And, uh, yeah, so we started Cody window cleaning and I actually saw a Cody window cleaning van this morning, uh, when we we're out for a walk with the dog. So it's been around for, I guess, 40 years. You still now. own it or did you uh, oh, sell it to somebody no. else? We sold it to a competitor, um, and he had it for a long time. It was a great business for him, retired, moved to Florida, and he resold it. I don't know the owners now. When we sold it to him, we had about 40 window washers. We're the largest in Ottawa, and I think it's still the largest in Ottawa. Which And they clean the windows in our building, actually. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, kind of full circle when you, when you walk around and you see the van and it's the same phone number. And anyways, it's, it's really cool. You know, it, it's interesting, I, and I'd love to get your take. Uh, there must be some sense of, pride that you built something that new owners two times now have like we have a brand here we're keeping it as as cody window washing we're not going to change it to bob smith whatever right yeah 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 and it was i mean i i did a post on it last year a social media post and one of the office managers reached out to me and she just told me how proud they were to have the name and you know and anyways it made me feel really good and uh I, this year, we're celebrating seven companies that we started that have been in business for 20 plus years. Wow. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. And like, so like, you know, I see Bobcats running around while well, we had the Bobcat dealership in Ottawa. We revived it. Somebody had gone bankrupt. We bought it and it's still going. So anyways, it's really cool to see, you know, all of these businesses that, you know, we, maybe we don't own them today, but they're still going and uh, there's kind of a legacy there. So it's really cool. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, one thing, uh, you know, in your bio or, or that I found on online says, you know, you, you, you call yourself a, a startup business coach. So I'd love to ask you, what is one major mistake you see new entrepreneurs make? Yeah. You know, I think 
first the first thing people maybe don't do is what do they want the outcome to be so what like why do they want to be an entrepreneur and i think you really need to nail that down before you kind of start making other decisions like am i doing it for freedom am i, am I doing like am i doing this cuz i'm swinging for a home run and i want to be like the next you know mark zuckerberg or elon musk or you know so cuz i think the path and the action that you take is a lot different based on you know maybe i just want freedom so that's a whole different path than you know i'm going for a home run so yeah i think a lot of people just get they get started they want to start a business but they haven't really defined what they want the end goal to be yeah when i work with uh newer entrepreneurs and coach them kind of more so in the coaching space than, yeah. than let's say just generally i find one of the big things or at least one of the things i like to talk them about off the bat is like the mindset you know, maybe you started this, your business as a side thing, or maybe you've left your job. There's a totally different mentality. And I had to learn this the hard way too, from being a corporate employee or an employee, just let's say, to being the boss, to be an entrepreneur. Um, I'd love to take get your take on sort of the mindset around being an entrepreneur as well. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I've never really worked for anybody else. So I wouldn't be able to have the perspective of, you know, what's the difference of I, like, What's the difference of working somebody else versus being an entrepreneur? Personally, I would be very scared to work for somebody else because like there's no control and you really don't know what's kind of going on behind the scenes. Um, you know, you could be out of a job tomorrow and you had no idea that was even coming or you had no control over changing that outcome. Um, but we've seen it like whenever we got into franchising, uh, you could see, you know, what kind of person could transition from being, you know, employed or uh, with the government or whatever they did before, who could kind of make that transition to entrepreneurship? And it's definitely not as easy as people think. So uh, we've seen a lot of people trying to get into franchising. They, they kind of don't even know what hard work is, right? right. So they've really done it or they're used to, turning it off at five o'clock. And I think a lot of entrepreneurship, it's kind of more like, you know, uh, you never, work, you never turn it off. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's like work-life integration. It's not like a work-life balance. You're not really turning it off. So anyway, so a lot of, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's having those conversations and really understanding it before you get into entrepreneurship. And often, like I'll tell somebody, read E-Myth Revisited. So I don't know if you've read E-Myth. Yeah, it's been a while. I, I, should, I probably should go back to it. Yeah, like if you read that, at least that'll help you self-identify, like what kind of entrepreneur am I? You know, if I'm a technician, well, probably stay away from sales and get into something that, you know, has high repeat sales opportunities, high referenceable sale opportunities, you know, so it's a kind of a different path than if you're just a pure entrepreneurship. If you're, if you're a true entrepreneur, don't get into something that's too boring because you're going to kind of mess it up probably. Right. So anyways, yeah. So all the, the different, the different paths you can go. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know how many companies are in the portfolio right now, but I wanted to touch on two. So the first one I wanted to talk about is your company bunking. Can you, yeah. can you explain to the audience what bunking is all about and, and what, and why you brought that to market? Yeah. So bunking is, uh, I mean, it's a marketplace where we help to connect like-minded people, um, for retreats, travel, living, uh, we spend about 18 months going to do uh, doing go to market tests to kind of figure out what's the lowest user acquisition cost with the best network effect uh, to go to market with. And that ended up being local micro retreats. So that's totally what we're focused on right now with bunking. So it could be like coaching. Uh, we've done some like on uh, on real estate or entrepreneurship or mindset. And they're typically two nights, three day local kind of retreats for eight to 12 people. And it's amazing. Like I've gone to them and and you go to these retreats and, you know, you meet all these strangers kind of coming in, but you're all like-minded. And by the time you leave in three days, you're like family, you know, like you've connected so much, uh, staying in the same place and just sharing stories and learning. And I mean, it's, it's, it's an awesome way to learn and to build some really good relationships. So that's what we're doing at Bunking. So Steve, Steve, I'm just to clarify. So are yeah. you guys 
you're not hosting these events. You're just being the marketplace for other people to put these events on together. Is that correct? Both. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're actually, we're partnering with people that want to do it. Um, we help them on the marketing. We help them, you know, because a lot of people are very, they don't have the confidence to host a retreat. Like they're like, what am I going to do? Are people going to come? So we work with them uh, and it's, we do weekly sessions with them and kind of build them up and we have a marketing program and it helps them get a place for the, everyone to stay like hotels yeah. or a, or a Airbnb or whatever. The case yeah. May typically be. Airbnb. Uh, okay. What we found like with, again, through the go to market tests, if you do, if you, if you host these in a facility where everybody's sleeping kind of in a different building, the connectivity is not sure. even close to what it is, as, you know, if you're, if you're at an Airbnb. So definitely an Airbnb and uh, everybody's in the same place. And yeah, so yeah, we'll help them find the location, uh, plan out the itinerary. Uh, we'll set up the retargeting ads on Facebook, you know, so that when they get people to go look at the retreat, they get retargeted for whether it's 30 or 60 days. Okay. And kind of now, okay, now I'm going to ask like a personal question here because like yeah. now I'm now I'm intrigued. I didn't know our conversation goes away. So let's say I wanted to do one a uh, high level retreat, yeah. um, you know, put aside the marketing and, and that sort of thing. It was like okay, this is what I kind of the location, I type of location I want. It's got to sleep eight independently, and hey, we want a, a private chef to cook our dinners. Like is that like I just here's my here's my request list, and you guys make it happen. Yeah, we'll we'll work with you so yeah, we can. Okay show you how to do it on your own or we partner with you uh, and we'll share some of the risks and then, you know, we'll split the profit. Uh, there's three reasons why people will do these retreats. So one is to make money. Number two is to build their brand, uh, you know, especially through the marketing that we do, like the meta marketing, it really helps to it's third party marketing basically or endorsement from us, or they're doing it to sell something, uh, else like coaching right so they right. get it's kind of top of funnel get people at a retreat show show the value and then people sign up to something on a residual basis most of the ones like we've never had one where people do it to make money so people are either doing it to build brand or they're doing it because they want to build residual income right they're on the back so, end as opposed to the front yeah end. exactly yeah so yeah. they're using kind of as a top of the funnel marketing opportunity we're doing we're even doing one, I think it's Startup Montreal, and I think we've got a lawyer, uh, a, a law firm is the sponsor of it. So they're actually sponsoring it, which is kind of cool. So, right. and they'll go teach something about, you know, because it's all startup entrepreneurs staying at the uh, at the place. So, right. so bun bunking's all across North America then? Is that? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All across okay. North America. So we're, we just got product market fit last year through doing these tests and doing these retreats was like, people loved them. They want to come back. People at the retreats want to host their own retreat. So it's got some really good built in network effect to it. So, you know, so we think, so we're, we're kind of, you can still do it for shared living or shared travel. You can still do that on bunking. It's not our proactive focus. So it's totally reactive. Somebody can go on there create a trip or a trip idea, look to connect with other people. Uh, but what we found is the further away things were and the more uh, time that's something like, you know, two weeks safari in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. Well, in, you know, starting June 1st to like June 14th, you're really limiting the audience, like the more of those factors you put in. So if you're doing these micro retreats, which are short in time and they're local, um, your chance of last minute bookings is a lot higher. Like it's just, it'll fit into people's schedule a lot easier. So the Got pond it. is bigger. Got it. Got it. And then the other one, uh, that I wanted to mention was, uh, rent anything store. Yeah. Uh, is it basically what the, what the name yeah. sounds like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally what it is. Yeah. So we launched our beta in, uh, in December and, uh, what we're doing is we're selling territories. So we have local operators basically uh, that help us build supply and help build the communities and it's rent anything like rent out your canoe you're going to be able to rent out your house you're going to be able to rent out your car uh over time so it's literally Two, tools like, uh, yeah I, I need a wood chipper somebody's got a wood chipper like i can rent yeah. it yeah put it up there whatever you want your rate to be you know so uh and it's all facilitated through the the the, the platform there's reviews there's all that stuff so 
Uh, we started in so your, your local people don't even need storefronts because they're just facilitating the person who's renting it, who probably is keeping it in their own home versus the person who wants to rent it, who will just take it for whatever period they need it, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we see a big opportunity for like, if you think about a home-based business, like a home-based medical equipment business, a home-based camera rental business, chair cover rental business, uh, yard game rental business, like it's, you know, board game rental business. So think about all these kind of micro home-based rental businesses uh, that people can have, you know, something they love doing. They start it on rent anything store, almost like a Shopify, but for rentals. Right, right. Uh, how is the transportation facilitated? Now I'm again asking my own personal question here. How is the transportation facilitated? Is uh, Does does your territory... Uh, um, uh, franchisees or whatever the terminology you use, are, do they facilitate the transportation? Let's say it's something that's like a bigger item or yeah. is it literally just, I, let's say I had something to rent to someone, I just build into my price and they pick it up or I drop it off or whatever. Yeah, what, when you uh, when you list an item in the marketplace, you can put that they have to pick it up at your place, you'll meet in a public space or you offer delivery for an extra fee. And if somebody wants it delivered, they'll say how much, you'll say how far, and give them a price and then charge extra for the delivery. We don't have that built into the app yet, uh, but but it is being built in where you'll have a base rate and then a per kilometer per mile charge. So it'll be automatically calculated. Okay, okay, yeah. very, yeah. very cool, very cool. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's still- so it's literally, no... literally could be anything. There's no-, no uh... Yeah, we had somebody looking to rent a goat. Uh, they want their grass cut. So, you know, yeah, if you want to rent a goat, you can do that. We have somebody who listed a coffin for rent. So if you're, you know, if that's uh, something you're thinking. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, that's not what I was thinking, but uh, yeah. I wasn't thinking of goat either, but. Uh, yeah. The chicken okay. pluckers. Yeah. yeah. So we've got that. We've got helping companions. So that's close to uh, launching as well. And actually that one is out of any we've built is probably the most, uh, where people are coming asking us to be part of it without us almost doing nothing more than any other brand we've built yet. Mm, so that one could be really interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, very yeah. cool. Very cool. Um, now, this uh, podcast uh, isn't a health-related podcast, but I would like to ask my guests a couple uh, wrap-up questions here. Uh, what does your uh, morning routine look like? Uh, morning routine, get up. Um get the coffee going cold glass of water before coffee so i learned that uh, somebody suggested that to me probably about four or five years ago the importance of having a cold glass of water before anything else so i do that and that made like i was stiff all day and yeah. i that's made like a massive difference um have a coffee wake up the dog bring the dog you know out the washroom uh try to get my social posts done uh, get out for another walk. And then we, we have our first stand up is at nine 30. So with our team and kind of be ready for that. So, yeah. Okay. So okay. cold showers, we talked about that earlier. So I do the yeah. five minute cold shower thing. So I, I find that works really well. Uh, pretty hard to kind of walk out of that shower and be in a bad mood or have a fussy brain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, breathing exercises, if you can get those in like 30 good deep breaths. And yeah. oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I'm a huge proponent of all those things that, that you mentioned for sure. Um, it could be health related or maybe it's business related. You choose. But what do you wish, uh, you know, you would have started earlier or, you know, or, or maybe an alternative way to ask is like, what would you tell your younger self when it comes to either some health practice or or maybe even a business practice? I think I, I, for me personally, walking is a really big therapeutic thing. So physically and mentally. So maybe having started doing that earlier. Okay. Might have been, yeah. I think, you know, that's like it reduces anxiety, gets your kind of brain thinking, like just, there's so many good things about walking that. Uh, that Absolutely. Are... And I'm a huge proponent of a lot of low level movement throughout the day you know, our, our medium intensity or high intensity, they have, they have their place, obviously, but, uh, yeah. and, I, and I was just selling this to someone last night, actually. Um, what, we've only had our dog for not even a year and a half, 18 months, something like that. It's like, it just gets me out more for, yeah. again, just that low level walking. Cause you got to take him out to do his thing. 
five or even 10 minutes, but multiple times a day, you get some sunshine, get some fresh air, uh, and, and get a little bit low, low movement. So huge, huge proponent of having a dog's walk. So. I'm with you. We lost our dog in October of last oh, year. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that. Thank you. And we were waiting for, uh, like, we're going to wait a year to get an, you know, think about getting another dog. And, uh, man, you, I just found myself sitting around more than it was crazy. So anyways, we got a dog. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So now we have a, a little puppy and the puppy keeps you busy. So oh, what good. kind of, what kind of dog? A great Dane. So, oh, yeah. oh okay. Great, yeah. great Dane puppies get big fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, last question here, uh, before we wrap it up, any last, you know, words of wisdom or golden nuggets that you like to share with, with the audience today? Yeah, I mean, it's just, <clears throat> I think that, um, you know, if you're starting, like it, anything is possible. And, uh, you know, people will always say, oh, is this a good idea? Or will this work? Will that work? It's like, I'm not even going to judge because I've, you know, in my early days, I would just like, there's no way they can make that work or something, you know, like just having this kind of arrogant thought and these people pull off amazing things. So I just think <clears throat> the right person with the right mindset and, you know, like just, they're going to make it work. They're going to find a way to make it work. Like anything is possible if you work at it hard enough. Anything so. is possible. Maybe we, that might be the, the title of the show. We'll see. There you go. Anything is possible. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Steve, I really appreciate your time today. And uh, we're going to have uh, for the audience, uh, you know, all of Steve's links, you can get them on the socials, learn more about bunking, learn more about rent anything store. Uh, that sounds like it might be even a good passive income thing for for people uh, really good. as as well. So um, yeah, I might have to check that out uh, myself. So uh, Steve, again, I appreciate you uh, uh, being here today and sharing your wisdom with everyone. Uh, first episode of season two of the Defax Andy Show. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to throw it back to J23, who's going to guide us out with some music. And again, also, everyone, don't forget to check out uh, today's sponsor. And thanks for listening to the Defax Andy Show. Exceptional results for the exceptional you. Take care. This episode is brought to you by Bioptimizers. I love their product, Gluten Guardian. Now, I'm not celiac, but I am sensitive to gluten. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just can't avoid it. You're out. Sometimes you just want to celebrate that, you know, birthday cake that your kids made, what have you. So I'll pop, pop a couple of these pills just to help mitigate uh, the inflammation and help break down uh, the gluten uh, that I may ingest sometimes. So Gluten Guardian also works with uh, dairy as well. Uh, I Again, I take these occasionally and, uh, you know, click the link and you can save 10% off at least, if not more. Cheers. Podcast produced by the Minted Green Company.